Uh, so I have a question to ask from all of you. Um, and uh, please just be very open, uh, very uh, straightforward. Uh, don't hesitate to say anything that is very simple that you think, you know, you don't think that, uh, that you have a particular idea, but it might be less important or it might be too simple don't, or it might be wrong. Uh, have no misconceptions like that. I have three questions to ask you. Uh, and I want to see what your answers are, what your responses are uh, to these questions. Think of it as a brainstorming session where everyone can contribute. And uh, if you have any, uh, if you have the answer in a clear, concise way, <laughs> sorry, um, if you have your answer in a clear, concise way, uh, please just uh, use the chat box uh, because if I get multiple answers, I can bring them into the Excel sheet. So the first question I want to ask everyone is, in your opinion, and I want you to think like uh, someone who uh, is, you know, someone who like think of yourself in the position of an examiner, right? Uh, and considering everything that you've learned, like just bring it all in, uh, all the YouTube videos you've watched, uh, all the instructional videos I've made, all the advices I or any other person uh, that has given that, that you have taken advice from, um, any other experiences and expertise, your degree programs, uh, your personal experiences. What are the qualities of a high quality SCS answer? So if you have a response, let's say you're reading an answer for the CS or an answer written for a particular task and you're reading it, but for you to deem or for you to decide that that answer is of a high caliber, high quality, what characteristics do you expect to see in that answer? I think it would be really good if I can get at least three qualities from everyone. Per person, we have at the moment uh, eight people online. So maybe three minimum. All right. right. Maybe I can go, I can jump in, Azman, here, Ernest. Yes, please. Yeah, I think uh, one one thing that I would really consider to be um, a good quality answer is first of all is is it addressing the question that has been asked? Right, um, uh, an answer that the question asked. All right. Um, anything else, Ernest? Uh, the other one as well is, uh, yeah, but well, you've put it up there. I was, I, was, I was thinking in terms of the structure of the, the answer itself, but yeah. Okay. Um, noted, uh, Ernest. Thank you so much. Uh, if, if there's anything else, please feel free. Uh, practical to the point, real life examples, if possible. Um, answer should be practical to the situation cited in the task. It should also have some theoretical basis. A theoretical basis uh, with respect to the subject area should be practical uh, to the All right, have a theoretical basis address the requirements of the question. So this is noted uh, in-depth knowledge of the precinct company and industry. Compelling arguments. Response questions. Brilliant. Uh, one that demonstrates an understanding of the question and utilizes the theory and models in the answer. So 
one that think okay after question devices uh the theory so depth and quality of so quality uh quality over quantity depth uh we when you say depth depth in terms of so depth of taking it from uh the comments that you have uh in my answers way it's more like i'm just um hovering around the the question the the question i'm not exactly getting into the dire detail of what you're asking so it needs to have enough depth depth in terms of what it's answering right so uh depth of So we have a, a series of answers here. Anyone else? Any other suggestions? Or does that mean your silence? Does it mean that uh, all the points that you thought of are here? But if there's anything else, anything small, anything that you think insignificant, please send them over. We need this. Uh, this is like an international brainstorming session on uh, uh, the CS. Uh, so a well-structured answer, an answer that addresses the question asked, I think uh, that also in another sense was what we saw here, one that utilizes the theory, no, sorry, one that demonstrates an understanding of the question. So you when you read the question, you want to, sorry, when you read the response, you want to feel that the, whoever wrote this uh, has understood the question and it's practical. It should be practical and applicable to the situation. It should be to the point. So to the point. All right. That's good. Real life examples, if possible. Sure. Uh, have a theoretical basis. I think uh, that also connects to this um, one that utilizes the theory or models in the answer, uh, in-depth knowledge of the precinct and industry. So, so you want to see in your answer that this person knows really what they're talking about. Compelling arguments in response to the question. So compelling arguments, quality over quantity, agreed. But uh, I would, may I also add, but sufficient, quantity as well so always yes we want quality over quantity but not write 250 words uh, and and think that all right i wrote five paragraphs 50 words each and the quality is great uh, not that sort of thinking sufficient quantity but one within that quantity prioritizes quality uh, depth of content quality. There is an idea of depth I talk about. Uh, all right, so this is, this is really good. Uh, thank you so much, everyone. Second question. What discipline should you maintain when writing a SES answer? So this is not so much about the response, but this is so much about your behavior and uh, your, uh, you know, your discipline. What kind of discipline should you maintain? What, what are the things that you should be doing uh, when you're preparing, when you're writing, uh, before writing, as you're writing, when you're close to the finishing of your writing? Uh, what are the different action points that you see, see yourself or see within your behavior when you're writing a CS answer? Now, many of you, almost all of you have tried a mock or a model mock. Uh, so, you know, you've gone through the exercise, so you know where you went wrong, you, you have certain admonitions about where you want to, uh, you know, improve yourself. So in that sense, what are the kind of disciplines that you want to maintain? That ideally, 
in a situation where everything goes right like imagine the exam day and imagine the discipline on the exam day uh, imagine that it is the ideal version of the discipline you want it to be what are the things that you see there like i would say one uh, that already came up i would definitely agree or encourage all of you to be well rested so something like this right good um was it eric or ernest uh, did you have something to offer please go ahead or ahmed so we have focus stay calm um don't jump answering agreed plan the answer avoid the the place okay so you want to plan your answer uh focus on percentage allocation that's really good sub task uh don't overwrite don't overwrite on what you know other uh, sub tasks get the i'm changing the wordings a little bit amat there with your permission deprioritized so you want to like it's it's related it's it's very well connected to the above point here focus on percentage allocation per sub task maintain a positive composure i like that um ignore negative thoughts of of all together like you should watch the motivation video i made i think in uh, <laughs> for no not me i i made one for last february <laughs> you should probably watch that um like where i i talk about this concept of ignoring negative thoughts um focus on what can go right okay that's good manage time and stick to the time limit so it's it's almost like you know what to do and who am i to tell you what to do you know exactly what to do pay attention to time allocation based on the task allocation so so focus on percentage allocation per sub task so we have stay be well rested be focused stay calm don't jump to answering plan the answer focus on percentage allocation don't overwrite be positive ignore negative thoughts so does this cover the entire discipline uh everything a uh, house the diet looking um <laughs> i do you want to be hungry or do you want to like how how anyone has any thoughts there uh and with respect to setting up your pc or going to the exam center any thoughts there 
I'm, I'm just talk, talking all together. Anything with respect to your family, um, when and as to writing a CS answer. <laughs> Yeah, but but I, I like you know getting to getting you to speak up because most of the things that manifest in life and you you really think about this in terms of your past, you'll realize that things that you have said that you will do, you end up doing. Uh, you know you because there is a there is something really unknown, a force behind words that you speak. That's why, you know, people must be very careful about what they say uh, and, and what you speak because you know, it doesn't have to be recorded. But when you say something that, that can have a very powerful impact. So it, it tends to manifest itself. So any other thoughts uh, with respect to the discipline answer or the exam itself? All right. So while while I, I don't see any new points, I really like this list as well. It's like it's it's perfect. Mm, I was going to ask you what will happen if uh, you know if something goes wrong with the system, uh, or if the invigilator turns up late, the, uh, the proctor, or you know in the exam center whoever is in charge <laughs> is is rude to you. But I think we have the answer to that here. Uh, everything, through everything, through, what do they say? Thick and thin, just stay calm. <laughs> right? So uh, I think that, that sums it up. Uh, brilliant set of answers we have here. I think, I, I really hope that everyone absorbs this in detail, you know, that, that you have a good hang of this, good track of this, because uh, this is pretty much you telling me that there is nothing uh, so much that I have to contribute, uh, just that I can be sort of like this central point where we bring this all together. But you know in your heart what you have to do. And even if the worst possible thing happens, or even if, the, if, if things are going wrong for you, that seemingly um, wrong for you that day, seemingly, you know, setbacks, um, bad omens or whatever, um, the, the idea is to just stay calm and, uh, and to be focused. Um, okay. So we have, we have some, some very good points here. All right. So, uh, this query, it may seem a little similar to the first question, but I wanted to ask you, what does the examiner want to see in the answers? Okay, I see the resemblance there. Uh, but when I crafted the answer, I was thinking more in the lines of uh, me as the marker, uh, just what my expectation is. And there is a, a very uh, specific set of guidelines that SEMA itself has given us. So that, was, that was what I was trying to get to. For me, uh, if I try to clarify the difference between the first query and the third query was that the first query is more from a, from a perspective of you thinking about the kind of answer you want to write. And um, the third query, is you thinking about the kind of about the quality of the answer that the examiner wants to see? So in that sense, finally we are able to see if those match. So can can anyone take a moment, put down a few points? What do you think the examiner wants to see in the answer? Now think like literally like the examiner. What does the examiner want to see?
right? So we have easy to read. Coherent or we say clear and sensible to follow. Brilliant. Um, strong and sensible discussion. Demonstrate an understanding of the key competences. Competences, understanding of the strong, understanding of the question, a structured answer. So I think uh, a good structure is, is sort of very close to this point where because your structure is good, it dictates that your answer is easy to read clear and sensible to follow. So structure is very important, agree. Anything else, uh, anything anyone's missed? You're the examiner, you're marking, you're, you're, you're giving marks. Um, let's say you you finished marking an exam, and this particular student is has got seventy nine. To give that extra mark, what would you like to see? And to help this student pass. All right, so to the point, have I included it? Okay. And uh, <laughs> so um, Veronica says what she would do. She says that she would just be nice and she'd give that mark and that God sees your kindness. Indeed. Um, Okay, all right, I, I think that kind of sums it up. Uh, but um, with respect to professional competence, I think Eric had mentioned or Ernest had mentioned that your answer should demonstrate strong understanding of the core competences. Uh, and the first three points I think are very important. Easy to read, that your answer should be clear, sensible to follow and good structure in your answer. These are all very important qualities. So mostly here are a real life example. Inappropriate. The argument convincing. Brilliant. So you want to make your case strongly to the examiner in that sense. Sure. That can be a very strong point. So may I ask a question about structure? Can, can you elaborate to me? What do you mean? by good structure. That your answer must have a good structure. What does that mean? Like an answer with a good structure has what kind of qualities? Now a little more surgical. Specific components in terms of language, in terms of presentation, in terms of 
writing what do you think what decides or what does good structure represent if i try to clarify it further you write you end up writing let's say a thousand word answer and for you to look at that answer and say this answer has good structure what are the qualities you would want to see or what are the components what are the tools what are the language uh related like english related anything any any disciplines that you want to mention good structure what decides good structure so simple simple but well written introduction okay proper all right so per paragraph all right that, that is good uh we will clarify that as we go along but it's really good uh, to have subheadings all right use of subheadings i really like that one so thank you uh, eric thank you corine um, a good conclusion where necessary yeah so i would say that where necessary is very important because sometimes at the cs students end up writing uh conclusions to be really straightforward and blunt unnecessarily so we don't want to write uh, conclusions or introductions unnecessarily points should be so when you say systematically you does it mean if i say a proper sequence or order to it that be correct or any other right okay so you want to write your points with with good order probably something like something that i tend to mention is that you don't want a point like you don't want your first point getting repeated again when you're writing your fourth point where you kind of you know mixed up the idea and the fourth point is also like just a different representation of the same first point that you wrote so you want to be organized about how you present your points right if we would like it would be good to see a priority ranking where you know you have like it would really be a little concerning to see the most important point given the least importance and written last with the least amount of uh content depth there we go but still it will be rewarded it definitely will be rewarded but if you are supposed to get three marks for it you're only going to get one mark because you deprioritized it and at that point it's too late for you to have written because you run out ran out of time so when you are coming this is why planning is important so we'll be talking about it a little but yes everything is read and you are not given marks necessarily for the order but it is a strong point for you it is an advantage for you if you have maintained an order uh, because that would just give a send a positive signal to the examiner and it drastically you know elevates the examiner's mindset about the kind of writing that you do and the kind of planning that you are able to apply 
few answers. So we want to like convince the examiner that you're good in, in what you do. Uh, yes, please go ahead. The reason why I'm asking that is that um, it is possible that probably at the beginning of your answer, you might be fumbling around a little bit, but towards the end, you are making a good point. So what if you get bored in the process? You're like, nah, this person is not really answering the question. Hence, I'm asking, are you really reading everything that you read? And you know exactly what I'm talking about. Because probably you get the point at the end and there's no time to go and adjust your answer at the end because you have a time pressure. Right. So probably given uh, based on the fact that you you maybe per script, you have 15 minutes or whatever it is, you like once you start reading the first two paragraphs, you're like, nope, not answering the question. Whereas probably towards the end, there is an answer to that question. It's just that I did not start off correctly. Right. So I understand. So I want to be very clear again. Yes, everything is read and everything is rewarded. Not a single word or sentence is omitted. But on top of that, um, in terms of professional competence that you're supposed to display, because this is definitely not, you know, the, the nature of the exam is it's time pressure and uh, it's supposed to be written by professionals. And think of it in terms of business acumen and leadership, where you're facing a crisis in your business and if you're, you know, if there's a problem and if, if you suddenly hear a news, which, which is really troublesome, you want to be a leader or a, or a business person who is ready to, you know, respond to it in a, in a high priority uh, sort of sense, because you want to be seeing the bigger problems first and you want to be able to tackle them in a, in a rate of, in a sort of, you know, ranking, uh, that you based on your judgment you decide that this is the most important so you would want to tackle the most important thing first and the least important uh, last so there is an expectation there not it's not necessarily an exam technique or a theoretical or something with respect to writing but it's directly connected to the cgma competency framework where your business acumen and your leadership skill is expected to be you know like and and you're not penalized heavily and there is no penalizing format uh, or design in the marking but it really sends a positive signal to the examiner if you are able to prioritize major concerns major points at the beginning at the outset of your answer and practically thinking i totally understand what you mean me and i totally agree with you it can happen it can happen to anyone it can happen to me. So that's why, you know, we have a lot of room uh, with a 55% pass rate. So there is absolutely nothing to worry about. It's like, you just have to perform at a little above half the expectation. So that's the, like that itself is like a major plus. But on top of that, um, if, if there is a question and, you know, the most important, the most, because the most important can in a practical business scenario be the most obvious also it can be the first thing that comes to your mind if there's a building on fire the first thing that you want to do is put out the fire before thinking about all the other technical aspects related to the fire uh, just like ahmed said and just like we discussed earlier the examiner is one is a very optimistic there's a very optimistic attitude there which is why even if you uh, are short of one mark or two marks, there is always the opportunity given the overall vibe you have presented within your answer that they would judge you to be someone who is worthy of being a Sigma member. This is the final case study. So this is a judgment where are you worthy of calling yourself a, a ACMA or a CGMA or not? So that sort of judgment comes in. So even in that sense, that's why these are important. Uh, showing excellent competency levels with respect to the CGMA competency framework, good business acumen, good business sense, good leadership, good technical skills. All of those are important because it speaks to who you are in your answer. So when you present a strong image of yourself, because you're going to end up writing what about 
minimum about 2500 words or 3000 3500 so in this answer it's a lot of words and it's a lot of language it's very unique to you nobody is going to replicate what you write so overall when you think about what you write and the image it represents and you convince the examiner in the discipline in the quality in the priority in the structure in the ease of reading in the clarity in the coherence if you can convince this examiner that i know what i'm talking about these are the solutions to the problems you have uh, pointed at me and this is how i deal with it and this is how i present a case this is how i argue this is how i am able to look at the positives and the negatives and you do a good job of it you are definitely getting through this so that is the image i want to have you uh, i want you all to have in your mind that you have to do a decent enough job to show the examiner to convince the examiner that you are professionally competent enough right so i think that what ahmed said also can be a great motivator for you to push yourself especially in the mock exams also to push yourself to write the most important uh, most priority points at the outset of your answer now despite all of that there can always be the situation where you forget a point you you know you it only came to you when you had written half of your answer or it only came to you when you had 5 minutes on the clock that is definitely a possibility and for that we have 45% of your exam uh, marking grid allowed uh, to the you know to the gray area so there is plenty of leg room this is not a exam where you need to get 100% to pass nobody is expecting perfection from you so we have plenty of room for that but we push ourselves to do the best we can and one of those things is also uh, structuring your answers and presenting your answers in a way that uh, shows good and strong business sense with room for the occasional error or forgetfulness which is normal is that does that clarify the whole matter yeah because i've read now uh, ahmed i know your your quality of writing you're a good writer veronica <laughs> i know who you are i've i've read at least maybe around 30000 about 30 40000 around 30 definitely more than 35000 words of your work like that's like literally like that's like a book <laughs> so i know what your writing is i don't know uh, i don't i know your capability so uh, there is absolutely nothing to worry about especially because it came from uh, veronica and ahmed also but we need good practice and we need to use the opportunity with the mock exams to practice these disciplines practice these expectations that you yourself are saying that we need that you yourself are saying that you would like to see in your answer so you are never going to hit the 100% mark because someone else this is a subjective paper if it was mcq sure 100 out of 100 you can get it but it's subjective and people are opinionated but you can get the 55 that's like a no deal that's like not a problem at all um you can i think all of you should have like a target of like 65 70 minimum at minimum just for your personal satisfaction just to prove to yourself that you know who you are and that you can deliver at that level so you should set your benchmark at like you should really think of your yourself and your ability to write and you should set an internal benchmark to yourself so that's where I, that's how you should approach this uh i by the time i mark the second mock i assign personal targets based on uh, an evaluation of your own writing i say like everyone like veronica knows i say okay your next mock your target is 70 so we do that because we want to push ourselves so use that approach there is absolutely nothing to worry about and you can definitely have a very optimistic attitude toward how the examiner is going to mark your answer but having said that i don't want any of you to waste an additional thought beyond that about the examiner 
you have no control over that. You can't call the examiner and ask. You can't call SEMA and ask them to give you your answer script. None of that is possible. But just because you can't do it doesn't mean SEMA stops what it's doing and thousands of students stop writing their CS. This engine is running. You're part of that engine. The objective is to clear the hurdle, become a member, and put the exams behind you and reap the benefits of membership. That's the objective. And we want to make sure what are the constructive and positive thoughts that will help us drive ourselves toward that objective. We don't want to get worried and get entangled in the, the uh, non-value adding minutia of what kind of thoughts, you know, what kind of, what kind of technicalities, what kind of et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So we want to be very focused. We want to keep our thoughts very minimal, only the important thoughts in our mind and just push forward and practice hard the discipline that is required and get this done. That's the mindset I, again, invite all of you to build for the next three weeks. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Eric has a question. What is the average size of an ideal paragraph? How long should it be not to overwrite, underwrite a paragraph? Okay, so we will talk about talk a little bit about paragraphs also. But one thing I want to tell you is that paragraphs, um, the, the size and the depth of the paragraph is dependent on the point. So if there's a question about the strategic benefits and you have five benefits, but the first three are very strong and very obvious and very well linked to the business. So you might write seven sentences in that paragraph. Whereas the latter two object benefits are not that strong, but they are definitely benefits, but they are reasonable, they are general, they are sensible. They are benefits, but you don't have enough evidence and, and you can present them in a plain sense. So then you might end up writing a three sentence paragraph, two sentence paragraph at times. Um, three minimum acceptable, no problem at all. So rather than thinking about the average, like uh, sometimes people tend to think about paragraph in terms of the number of words, but I like to say, think about it in terms of the number of sentences you write. So seven to 10 is a very, very strong paragraph, very strong. You're writing a lot there and there's a lot you can do within a paragraph. So if you're writing a seven to 10 sentence paragraph, it means you're doing everything that needs to be done within that para. Uh, five, sure. Three, sure. Two, at the latter stages, at lo for low priority points, you write the introductory sentence and you write the additional sentence. Perfectly acceptable. That's one point right there. So it really depends on the point. For now, before we look at the writing lessons, for now, does that answer your question, uh, Eric? Ah, yes. All right. You're welcome, Eric. Thank you. Uh, good question. Brilliant. So, okay, there we go. So now you have told me what you're thinking and what you are expecting to see. Now I want to tell you what you need to offer. And you will realize that you know exactly what you need to do. So the first rule is as we enter the mock phase, is that I've, I've already said this, but write, write, and write. You absolutely cannot negotiate this with yourself. You have to write. Why three? Because there are three compulsory mocks. There are more that you have to do, so you must do it. Um, a quick set of essential reminders. One is the co-activity. So you know one on strategy, one on ecosystem and environment, one on financing, one on risk, and one on internal controls or control overall. These are the five co-activities. You can expect to be tested throughout your entire paper across all five. You're going to be, there is going to be a balanced set of subtasks. If you look at all the eight subtasks or um, seven, eight or nine subtasks all together in your, across your entire paper, what will happen is that they will, they are testing all five. There are seven critical tips. I've updated them, but you have to know your role, know who you are. Remember the co-activities, know the purpose or why you're writing, know the audience, to whom. So it's, it, that's an important deciding factor. Know the content and know the time 
and know the words, what they are asking, the, the requirement exactly, evaluate, discuss, assess, um, uh, compare, identify, recommend, justify, know the words. So just a quick reminder, but you have a detailed YouTube video on that. Now the updated version, the 10 critical tips of SEMA SES writing, you can just search that on YouTube. Um, there are five main reasons I've identified and I've stood by throughout uh, all these years with respect to why a student or learner could fail. Misunderstanding the task, lack of the display of required professional competence, and this is something that didn't come up in uh, many of the answers that you gave me in the brainstorming session, because at the strategic level, you want to write, and that slightly relates to what Veronica brought out as the, the concern on the depth matter, because you want to write a strategic level answer. End of the day, you might write the most clear answer, the most easy to read answer, uh, the answer with the best structure, good paragraph, good language, Everything is good, but if the points that you write, if the content that you write, the theory, you might write a lot of theory, but if all of that doesn't match the strategic thinking, the boardroom thinking, and you're writing an MCS quality answer or an OCS quality answer, you're not going to get through. That is very important to remember. Failure to grasp the overall context and applying it. So we'll, we'll be talking about application, but you cannot, absolutely cannot take a risk of purely just, just writing uh, out of your whim. You have to apply yourself. Preconceived notions leading to a tunnel vision. So this is the idea of walking into the exam with you know, different ideas in your head. This is what is going to get tested. This is what is going to happen. Talking to other members, talking to people who have done certain variants, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That is a huge risk and failure to present the final written format solution at the required standard. And that is what I'm going to clarify now. There are five basic writing lessons that are very important in the exam. And I'm going to take you through it 